Thank you all for being here today. On behalf of the Global Foundation for Democracy and Development and in close collaboration with the Dominican Republic Mission to the United Nations, we welcome you to this panel discussion entitled Local Productivity, Entrepreneurship, and Employment, Essential Tools for Poverty Eradication. This presentation and the launch of the book with the same title take place on this date um, which is honoring the United Nations International Day of Eradication of Poverty. And we hope that they will give you some insight as to the current progress of the Dominican Republic in attaining the Millennium Development Goals. At this time, I have the great pleasure of introducing Ms. Luz Andujar, who is Counselor of the Permanent Mission of the Dominican Republic to the United Nations, to give some opening remarks. Luz. Thank you. Good afternoon to the panelists, uh, Ms. Jamile Eusebio, uh, Mr. Jose Caravaggio Cueto, and uh, Mr. Anders van der Horst. And uh, good afternoon to our moderator, Ms. Mandy Sachitano. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to welcome you to this side event, Local Productivity, Entrepreneurship, and Employment, Essential Tools for Poverty Eradication. Let me begin by thanking the Global Foundation for Democracy and Development for the organization of this event in partnership with the permanent mission of the Dominican Republic to the United Nations. The International Day on the Eradication of Poverty promotes people awareness of the need to eradicate poverty and destitution worldwide, particularly in developing countries. Unemployment and under unemployment and underemployment are at the core of poverty. Rapid economic growth can potentially bring a high rate of expansion of, pro of, pro of productive and decent employment, leading to a poverty reduction. Given the importance of employment for poverty re reduction, job creation should occupy a central place in national poverty reduction strategies. For economic growth to effectively contribute to poverty reduction, macroeconomic and social policies must focus on job creation, reducing inequalities and providing social protection. But nevertheless, the contribution of the growth process to the reduction of poverty does not only depend on the rate of the economic growth, but also on the ability of the poor to respond to the increasing demands of the labor market. Shifting from poverty reduction to the eradication of poverty requires us to look at the issue in a different way. We need to find a new approach to development. And this is why this event is so interesting and is so valuable. Thank you very much, and we wish you, distinguished guests, a very successful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Luz. We now welcome Ms. Yamile Eusebio, who is the director of the New York Office of the Global Foundation for Democracy and Development, to give a brief introduction. Thank you, Mandy. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this panel presentation and publication launch of the work of a uh, very young man, <laughs> most recent fellows pro uh, programs scholar, Jose Caraballo Cueto, whom I would like to thank for trusting in us for this important research as part of the fellows program. I would like also to thank Andres van der Horst for accepting our invitation and traveling from Dominican Republic to New York to share with with us his comments on, the, on this presentation and publication. Thank you to the Dominican Mission to the United, United Nations and its representative, Luz Andujar, on behalf of Ambassador Virgil Alcantara for their support and trust in our organization and for being in the, at, the, at this interesting event. We are all here are part of this panel discussion and launch of local capacity development, the key to benefiting from globalization and reducing employment in the Dominican Republic. On behalf of GFDD and its sister institution in the Dominican Republic, Fundación Global Democracia y Desarrollo, and its executive director, Natasha Despotovich, I am delighted to welcome everyone to for being part of this distinguished audience. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our fellows program and to this important topic. The fellows program was launched in 2009, contributes to the growing body of research of our institution with updated documentation about themes that are important for the Dominican Republic and abroad. With these types of events and publications, we seek to share the results of research done by master and PhD candidates while giving them the opportunity to become immersed in Dominican culture. 
On this occasion, Jose Caraballo Fellow in 2012 undertook a month-long study in the Dominican Republic, interviewing a variety of key actors involved in the local economy. The topic of Jose's research, which at first glass, glance appears length, contains relevant information on this issue and analyzes how countries like the Dominican Republic could benefit from an intelligent strategy for local production to minimize unemployment and how to take advantage of international commerce while ensuring that countries export more than they import. His study looks at success stories like South Korea, which in early stages had almost the same benefits from preferred access to markets and demands in the United States, and how this could be an example for countries like the America, Latin America to achieve better results from international trade strategies. Caravaggio examines how a systematic national plan for stimulating local capacity is central to enhance global markets competitiveness and reduce unemployment in the Dominican Republic. Jose Caraballo will present his research much better than I can do, but I have taken the liberty of mentioning a few things that are important uh, that, are, that are very important for for us on his work. My purpose is to welcome you here and to thank you once again for coming. I hope you will find this panel interesting and informative. We would like to give each one of you a copy of the publication for your reading pleasure we follow this event. It will be here outside. Please take one uh, as you leave. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yamile. Without any further ado, it's my great pleasure to present to you Dr. Jose Caraballo Cueto, a 2012 GFDD fellow who is presenting his research entitled Local Capacity Development, the key to benefiting from globalization and reducing unemployment in the Dominican Republic. Hello everybody, welcome. Thank you for being here in this um, difficult time, so to say, it's lunch time. Um, I want to present to you the findings of my research in the Dominican Republic. The background of this research is, is first of all, my major inside of the economic um, discipline is the economic development, so I'm always interested in um, case studies of different countries, especially in Latin America. Um, and also, because this country, Dominican Republic, represent a great example or, or a remarkable example, because have a very high economic growth, as I'm going to show, um, but it, st it still face many challenges. And, 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 and lastly, but very important, is because I, I love my second homeland. So the opportunity arises with this foundation, and, and I'm really grateful for all their support, and, and it was a great experience that I recommend to, to anyone. So the motivation for doing this research, so to say, is that we all know the, um, what, we, what are called the development miracles of the la last century. Um, namely the Asian Tigers and especially South Korea. But interesting enough, in the 1950s, the Dominican Republic had a larger GDP per capita than, than, than South Korea, for example. So I was curious about what, what happened that from the 1950s to, 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 to this, to 2012, when I did the research, the GDP per capita of South Korea was about four times larger than, than the Dominican. What happened in, 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 in the middle of that period? If both countries have many similarities, for example, both were open to foreign investment and to trade, both had similar human capital in the 1960s, and, and many of you know that mo one of the most famous growth theories on these days is, is about human capital, that is, on the, the level of education increase, you grow better. Both have the same endowments in the 1960s. Bo both were affected by political turmoil and, and, and suffered colonialism. But this is what we see. Um, as you see, in the 1970s, there was a, a huge takeoff of, of South Korea GDP per capita, while, while the growth in the Dominican Republic um, increased, but uh, with a lower rate. One of the differences is that while both countries pursue an import substitution program, Korea requires export uh, achievement to, to the protected corporations, while, while Dominican Republic was focused in the local market. 
And they, they abandoned the import substitution program and start attracting foreign capital just as early as the 1969, they start the, the free trade zones. One of the first countries to start a, a free trade zone. While the Dominican Republic was focused in producing uh, low value added products, the, the um, Korea was focused in high value added production. While the Dominican Republic was focused, as I said, in attracting foreign capital, the, the Korea was um, very actively promoting the, the, the strengths of their, their own local capacity that I define as, as that group of corpor own corporations from, from the, the, in this case, from, from Korea. That are, that are able to bring profit from abroad. They create all of these large corporations, that world-class corporations that we all know, like Samsung and, and many others. So now, that, that was a sort of a motivation that I have, or, or, or what I found the Dominican Republic, a very interesting case. Now I, I move to one of the recent issues that was the impact of, of international trade. As you know, on the Dominican Republic signed a free trade agreement with the U.S. and with the Central American countries, um, based on a on, on a few arguments. One of them is the the um, re famous Ricardian trade theory, which is a sort of a dogma in this discipline. But we, if we want to um, um, base our predictions in this model, we need to look at the assumptions that are behind of this model to see if if, if it's compatible with the reality of the Dominican Republic. One of the assumption is perfect competition, namely that you have you don't have such large corporations that control prices or can influence or have any any power at all. You have real wages yeah, that equal productivity. So in that case, you don't need any labor institutions like minimum wages or labor protection. Trade. Uh, imbalances are neutral to employment, to the employment level, so in, in, that, in, in that case you don't have no problem of the, the impact of, of an imbalance in trade in, in employment. Factor homogeneous, so you, a worker can move from the agricultural sector to a bi biotechnological corporation without any friction, the, you don't need any training. And also, one of the most uh, important assumptions, in my opinion, is that every country has their own productive capacity. You are able to be successful in, at least in one sector. But none of these um, assumptions apply completely to the Dominican Republic. 80% of the exports of the Dominican Republic in 2011 were from free trade zones. So this is a simple representation of other uh, 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 theory of trade, let's say that in before trade, the U.S. have a, an average total cost that is representing the point BD, and then assume that the Dominican Republic is a smaller country, have a, 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 an average total cost that is representing point AC. If you open to trade without any um, restriction, the, the, the U.S. firms can set a price that provide profits to them, but it's still lower than the average total cost of the Dominican Republic. So what is going to happen is going to displace um, local firms. Some people argue, well, China has benefited from trade. And, and it's true, but it's hard to argue that it's from free trade that, that China has benefited from. As you know, China has a very active government doing uh, a, a, a lot of policy. And as it was just in 2001 that they entered the, the WTO. Other people argue, well, but that's from the producer side, but from the consumer side, you, they were, you can get lower prices and that benefit consumers. I look at different sectors and I compare a period, for example, from the 1960 to the 2000, a period before trade, and then I compare the period 2006, 2010, a period after free trade, and I don't see uh, a, a tangible in decrease in the level of prices nor at the aggregate level or at the, at the sectorial level. And, and this is because it's true, importers can get lower prices, but if there is not a, a large competition, they're going to, to keep more or less the same price. And all the savings from free trade are, are just translated into profits. Other arguments are that um, uh, there were a, a, a large proportion of export going to the U.S. And, and it, that was true, about 68% in 2006, but we're not from, from Dominican firms. We're from corporations that were already operating 
in free trade zones. And the exports were low value added, as, uh, as I described here, sugar cane, underwear. So this is what we see in, in the external account. The, the, the line that is like, uh, that is below the other one, you see that that's, that's the trade imbalance in goods. And you see how the, 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 the year CAFTA was signed in 2006, how the, the we can perceive that the FTA or the free trade agreement exacerbate the imbalance in the in, in that um, in, in trading goods in that account and also in the current account but this is a, uh, even if I adjust by, by the increase in petroleum there is another line there that is adjusting for the in increases in petroleum but this is a sustained pattern you know, you can we can go back to the 1990s and we see that there is a sustained negative balancing goods and I argue that that's, that, that's exactly the, the missing um, 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 role of the, of the local entrepreneur. They are importing more than they were exporting and, and, and is producing such a large um, deficit. And this is diluting the effect of, of other important factors. For example, there are many theories that remittance are important to decrease poverty, and this country have a very high level of remittance. Three, three billions of dollars in 2011 represent about 5% of the GDP. They have a, a very high tourist activity, represent about nine million, uh, I mean four billions of dollars in 2011. But both figures were not enough to offset the, the trade deficit only in goods. Some people argue, well, the U.S. also have a large trade deficit and nothing happened. Well, the, the trade deficit of the U.S. represents about 3% of the GDP, so it's not, it's not like 16% as is the case with the Dominican Republic. And the U.S. is printing dollars. Some, some economists argue, well, the U.S. having a, a trade deficit because they're printing dollars. They are paying in with dollars the export of the other countries, but that's not the same situation of the Dominican Republic. Um, that have to pay imports with, with international reserve. So my point here is not to reject foreign production, but that foreign production needs to complement the, the development of a local pr productive capacity, and that's not something that we see in the data um, for the last eight, um, 30 years. Trade with Haiti have increased without any free trade agreement. Actually, tr Haiti is the, fir is the best trade partner of the Dominican Republic uh, if you exclude the free trade zones. So for the true Dominican export, so to say, Haiti is the, is the best trade partner. If you include free trade zones, Haiti is, a, is the second trade partner, even, even more important than, than the whole European Union. This is a good market to develop infant industries. Um, because many of the products are demand for, for, from Haiti can be produced in the Dominican Republic, and this, all of these figures in exclude informal exchange. So if you take account of all these informal exchange that are taking place in the frontier, um, these figures are, are even, even bigger. And this also have another effect, and this is my second topic, are the employment benefits, because in the Dominican Republic, as in many other countries, including in the U.S., the largest employer are small and medium-sized businesses, are not the largest, the, the, the firms with more than 50 employees. And, is, and this is the case even after the DR CAFTA. You can see that you don't see a, a large increment of, of foreign corporation, large corporation coming to employ um, local workers. And I argue in this day, there is a very important day of eradication of poverty that the key for development is full employment. When you have full employment, you are sure that everybody has the opportunity to, to, to work, that, the, that there is no, no, no workers out there looking for a job and they cannot find it as long as are decent jobs. And this is a way that we can um, be sure that we are um, teaching a man how to fish. Transfers are a relief, but are not, it's not teaching a man how to fish. Uh, and in this country, unemployment rate has never been lower than 12% for the last 30 years, despite of a very high growth of about 5%. As many of you know, uh, GDP growth of 3% is considered a high growth anywhere, so 5% is above that threshold. 
Also, another problem of the labor market is the stagnation of the real wages. Real wages meaning that you are considering the increase in, in, in the level of prices. The real GDP increased more than three times from the 1991 to 2011. The GDP per capita, which is dividing the GDP by the population, the real GDP per capita almost doubled in this period, but the real average wage remained stagnant. So this is what we have. We have very high growth. But we have high unemployment, and we have a stagnation of the, of the income of the vast majority, which are workers. So this is in contrast with, with the trickle-down effect that many, some people argue and say, well, you, if you want to develop, you have to stimulate some, some sectors like free trade zone or tourism, and that eventually will leak to, to the rest of the, of, the, of the country. We don't see that in the data. Another famous theory, the margin productivity theory, you see, if you want to earn more, you have to be more productive. We don't see that in the data because the productivity of the Dominican Republic has been above the average of Latin America and even higher than highly competitive countries like Mexico and Brazil. So this imperfection of the market begs for, for labor institution, namely um, minimum wage and, and, and other labor institutions. But some people argue if you set um, labor institutions, you are going to create unemployment, and that's the famous neoclassical labor market or labor model. It's based also on perfect competition. That's one of the, one of the problems with this model. Um, it's hard to explain if you believe in this model. Why do you have such a high unemployment if there is a, a large informal market where there is no labor institution in that informal market? We don't, we don't see a connection with growth because all the employment is, is, is explained from the, from the supply side. If, if I'm an entrepreneur, I'm going, and I, I will not hire uh, more workers if I have a lower real wage because that decreases the productivity of my firms. I hire more workers if I have more demand. But in that model, the way to increase employment is by decreasing the real wage. In the last decade, the real wage decreased by 24%, while the unemployment rate went up. Um, and that is, uh, again, in contrast with this model. You don't see the effect of output composition, namely the difference between low and high value added. Um, I, don't, I don't see a, a large effect in unemployment in the increases in social security. So I argue that this model is not adequately explaining the high unemployment that we see in the Dominican Republic. I argue that the, the large unemployment is explained by, by a suboptimal labor demand due to a faulty growth model. Some people m blame migrants you know, and say, no, we have a large unemployment because migrants are expanding the labor supply. Migrants in the in Dominican Republic are mostly employing in, in jobs that locals are not willing to undertake, like harvesting, sugarcane, and non-skilled construction. Other people blame migrants for the stagnation of real wages, but migrants are also concentrated in, in, in sectors like construction and agriculture that doesn't have such a, actually have a lower decrease in real wages than in sectors where the Dominicans are the majority, like commerce and, and, and tourism. Other labor market challenges that I found is the, the vulnerability of women um, in, the, in the labor market. Uh, women are also earning about 20% less than men. And this is creating a barrier to development because 27% of the household were headed by a female. Also another problem that I found is the, the, the opp job opportunity for young workers. Half of them are in the informal sector and almost half of the remaining are without salaries. This might explain the, the high level of, of the high rate of murders. Here I create a simple formula to, to calculate the gap between the, in, the formal and informal labor market, and I also found that it was increasing in a period of, of high growth. So now I move to the econometrics, trying to do um, some try to find some order to quantify the relation between this jobless growth, the so-called jobless growth, and the unemployment rate. First of all, I look at the, 
uh, movements in the trade balance or the growth in the trade balance versus the changes in the unemployment rate. And for many periods, I see this uh, negative or inverse correlation, mainly that if the trade balance is, is, is worsening, um, you have a higher unemployment or is correlated with higher unemployment. Now I do the options equation, which is a standard model to study this effect of the GDP in the unemployment rate, the dependent variable is the unemployment rate. And I found that 4.47% is a, a rate of growth that doesn't decrease the unemployment rate. So this, in other words, the GDP growth is failing to decrease the high structural unemployment rate. Other versions of the Kuhn laws report the almost the same results. Now I look at the, at the sectors, and I found that local manufacturing um, is, is having a higher effect in the unemployment rate than, than free trade zones, and also than, than other sectors like, like tourism. This is the last column here, um, where you can see different, different, the effect of different sectors, and in the last row, I group all the rest of the sectors. So local manufacturing have a higher effect in the decrease of the unemployment rate, higher than, than all the other sector groups, and higher than free trade zone and then tourism. And this is also what I see when I look inside of the sector, the, the growth of the sector, the output growth in the sector on the vertical axis, and the growth of employment inside of this sector have uh, a high correlation. And I don't see that in free trade zones. I don't see that also in, in tourism. In other services, I see a uh, weaker positive relationship. Now, when I study um, the sectorial composition, I see that, for example, um, sectors like agriculture and commerce are sectors that have a low contribution to total GDP, but very high to, to, em to total employment. For example, commerce have almost a quarter of the total employment. Agriculture have, have contribute more to unemployment, to employment, sorry, more than free trade zones, tourism, and mining altogether. So this is this is a, a good, a, an important analysis if a country or this country decide to move from the target of a very high growth to employment creation. Also. The sector, I want to pay, uh, invest some, some minutes in agriculture because this country has been a net importer of food for more than, than 20 years. And uh, it's a country that can um, produce more. And actually, the, the low incidence of calorie, the high incidence of calorie consumption, right, they have one of the lowest calorie consumption in, in the Americas, uh, can be decreased if we. If we um, increase this, this sector uh, on agriculture, because many many people in the countryside can feed better their their, their families, but I'm I'm also um, raising the flags with this. The country should not specialize in the agriculture sector because that can create other problems, as has been um, found in, in in the literature. Some of the problem of this sector is the unfair competition with the uh, highly subsidized um, U.S. firms and the low so sophistication of the of the uh, of the farmers. So the conclusions that I uh, reach is that foreign capital should complement and not substitute the domestic capital, the domestic capacity. You need to require to all this. Um, foreign corporation horizontal linkages to the local um, um, sectors. I also found that this type of GDP growth that is concentrated in a few sectors does not, um, cannot reach a high development because it's unable to decrease the high structural unemployment rate. I, I argue that the, the focus has to be changed from, from just high growth to, to decent job creation. If you increase job, many papers in the literature have found that when there is job creation, poverty is reduced, inequality is reduced. So the government needs to create a, a program um, that stimulate local firms. And s some people might say, well, there is a fiscal deficit. How can you create that program with a fiscal deficit? 
I identified some, some areas that the government is having very low revenues, for example, tax gambling that is reducing the savings of the household. Only represent less than 1% of total tax revenues. Luxury housing and heritage too, that is, that's on passive income. And capital gains is a ridiculous amount that is contributing only 2,700 in the 2011. Some people argue, well, you should not tax this on sectors because, again, because of the trickle-down effect. But even Warren Buffett, that is one of the largest um, billionaires of the world, argue against low taxes on, on passive income. In tourism, uh, I said that the, this country received in 2011 four billions of dollars. The problem is that that four billions of dollars are, are flying away the country very quickly. So the, the, the country needs to put in place a toll gate tax that is decreasing in the amount of time that that money is circulating in the economy. Um, so if the money stay for one month, you decrease that toll gate tax. It stay for six months, you can even remove it. But if, if the money is removed before one month, you need to put a high toll gate tax because you need to take advantage of this um, large production that is having a low effect in the, in, the, in the whole country. In that way, you can stimulate the creation of a money market that is non-existent right now or, or is have a low development in, in this country. And that can work to decrease the interest rate uh, and, and, and stimulate credits to the local um, producer and also to the consumers. Another strategy is to pay higher salaries to tax collectors to reduce corruption. Uh, in, in the case of agriculture, they need to remove intermediaries from, from the value chain, namely that they have to produce terminated products. They need to look for high value added niches. And also the government needs to, to provide in, in, in low interest rate with these development banks uh, agriculture technology if they want to be successful in the global economy. Um, one on recommendation is to increase the data availability, but that's, that's actually improving. Need to manage competition. There is a high um, concentration in the markets, as I was talking here with my colleague, um, but the government is not doing a, a very good job in this area. Need to increase communication with local firms so you can know what is happening, how can you help them, and, and you need to, to um, increase their presence in, in, in the public policies. And you need to require export achievements. It's not to provide, as happened in the import substitution program of this country, that was only looking at the local market. You need to require to the protected corporations export achievement so that eventually you, need, you remove all that protection. And also you need to provide marketing assistance because this global um, the global market is too complex for local firms, and, and they need um, marketing assistance from, from the government. Um, you need to increase minimum wage periodically with productivity gains to correct that um, externality in, that problem, in, in the labor market. You need to look for south-south trade agreements so that the Dominican countries that are more or less at the level of the Dominican, so the Dominican Republic, so that they can compete in, in a in, in, in the same conditions. Um, you need to demand concatenation to the free trade zones, concatenation with the local firms and the local sectors. In the case of remittance, the, the, there needs to be more education about how to transfer uh, that money because there are some, some uh, corporations that are charging a, a high rate just to transfer that money. And if I open an account here, and I want to transfer money to my mom in, in Dominican Republic, I just have to give her a, an ATM. And in that way, you don't have to pay uh, nobody to transfer that money. Or, and, and that's some alternative that people don't, don't know how to, that, that are right there. And in that way, you can increase the level of remittance too. Need to create cooperative and uh, strengthen the affirmative action laws to decrease the discrimination in the in the in the in the labor market. So I just want to um, uh, stimulate um, the public, the policymakers to rethink the way that they are um, approaching. 
the economic development because what I have seen in the data is that what have increased in the Dominican Republic is the modernization of the country. You see um, expansion of the infrastructure, you see high buildings, but you don't see that for the vast majority they are earning more, you don't see higher development goals um, for everybody as you see in these few economic miracles or development miracles of the last century. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Jose, for sharing the results of your research with us. Um, we're very proud of the work that you've done, and we're excited to launch your book here today. Um, so I now have the great honor of welcoming to the stage Mr. Andres Vanderhorst, who is Minister and Executive Director of the National Competitiveness Advisory Council in the Dominican Republic. Uh, Mr. Vanderhorst will be giving some additional comments in response to Dr. Caraballo's presentation. Thank you. Hello? Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you that you be here at this time. Uh, it's very unusual for us in the Dominican Republic that without lunch, uh, there's many people interested in this kind of a uh, aspect, you know, and this kind of a study, but uh, I want to congratulate the first to Jose to make this uh, kind of a very uh, sharply and well done from the point of view of the economic uh, investigation, this investigation is very curiosity how uh, a Puerto Rico uh, guy, a very young professional with PhD, uh, with roads in Dominican Republic, uh, is interested in, in the develop in the Dominican Republic. Second, congratulated, um, appreciated the invitation from the uh, Global Foundation, and in the name of uh, the director Natasha, in the name of um, my very close friend Jamile Eusebio and Mendy, to invite me to you know to try to make some comments or rem remarks to value added in this kind of a. Uh, Investigation, and I, I repeat, is very has a rigorosity and very detailed in terms of how we investigated of uh, all the point of view of economic theoretical uh, investigation. So I want to beginning with uh, agrees and then with some disagreed to make this uh, again devaluated in in any case to make a debate with him, but try to come up with some ideas, some thought, uh, with the empirical experiences from uh, the government and from my uh, academic background. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, um, I know economics, I, my studies coming from public administration, I have many professors uh, who Jose mentioned before, in in Kennedy government school, and I ha have many experiences in in competitiveness in the Dominican Republic. I'm I'm running the the office for 12 years, so and I have some experience about that. First, I I am totally agree the model that we have in the Dominican Republic, uh, although, and in spite of uh, we are the country we, with the most uh, rise up the GDP in all American from 1950 uh, to, to right now is, uh, is the Dominican Republic. We have the same um, very low wages from the 15 years ago. So the the problem that we have, the inequality that we have, is coming from the model that we have. We have it in the Dominican Republic, although give uh, richness, the richness is concentrated the same person in the same company in the same sector from 15 years ago. So we can see, as uh, Jose said before, that we have um, very high quality infrastructure very high quality service in the concentrated in the capital, but the 
the poverty and inequality is the same, and we think that we are most in equality country in in the area. So the new challenge is how can use this kind of recommendation, this kind of analysis, try to adapt to our, our reality and change the mindset, not only for the uh, public policy makers, but also for the most important, the new kind of uh, uh, businessman and the new kind of firms who, who make the, the, the model difference. Uh, I'm totally agree about the 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 dear Kafta wasn't uh, um, you know the the solution that we expect and the solution that they sold the the country like United States sold that is could be to the Dominican Republic and I want to make some backgrounds when uh, we begin to study or to approach to the to make a dear Kafta. The Central American was in, in the middle of the, of the negotiation with the United States. That was 2003-2002. Uh, and uh, we came to in, the, in the table of negotiation in the, last, in the last year. So we only have to negotiate everything in three or four months. In this, uh, in this stage, that was uh, tried to make some docking with uh, terms that they negotiated before the United, for the United States. That was a very dangerous non-negotiated. That, uh, that was a more dangerous than negotiated with the United States. But the problem was when we implemented the free trade agreement, the DR Cast, the DR Capta was in 2007. And you remember in 2005, China was open to be able to sell to the United States. In the United States, in this stage, was uh, the principal consumer than the Dominican Republic. They consumed us 85% of our export. Uh, in that stage, in, two, in the beginning of 2000, we was, uh, for example, to give you some idea, the fourth in all over the world uh, exporter to to the United States in terms of textile and garment. So when China came to sell to the Dominican Republic, in spite of they have a, a tariff, we don't have a tariff, they, they you know, uh, take out more than 55,000 uh, employees in the Dominican Republic. So that was idea that give you some um, thought about is different when you analyze the, the 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 free trade agreement with Mexico, the NAFTA, or the free trade agreement result with Chile, or even the new ones, the free trade agreement with a China, with a Colombia or Panama, which is uh, right now the China wage has increased, so there are more opportunity than that we have in 2007. Then in 2008, we have a crisis, financial crisis in the United States. So the lower, the, the larger, uh, you know, the wages in the United States is going down and uh, opportunity to export that was, was going down. So if you analysis the model, we need to, to, to maintain this uh, GDP, uh, more than six or seven percent, we need to le leverage with uh, uh, another kind of uh, uh, another kind of uh, increase in foreign foreign uh, investment or uh, some loans and, and try to to be how we can manage the the variables in in economy. So it's it's important in this analysis to see what happens in terms in historical terms to analyze that in this in terms of of free trade agreement result but in the last 10 years we have a uh, loser and we have um, uh, winners in in they consider 
you know, they concede with a, with a free trade. Commerce, for example, was a financial service and tourism was the f and telecommunication was the big winners in, in the last t 10 years in the Dominican Republic, and mainly the service. The manufacturing, um, the free, the, the f sun, uh, free zone, the agricultural, I think that was a uh, loser. But the, l the main loser in this, the last 10 years in the D DR, and the main loser the, in the free trade agreement with uh, DR is uh, the government. Because although we are rising every year in the economy, the fiscal impact and the fiscal, the present, the fiscal the, that the government can manage to solve the many demands that we have uh, is the same or less than the other countries in the area. It's the same that we have in 10 years. So right now we have a very big uh, economy, economy 10 times bigger than that we have a 50 years ago, but in terms of how the, the, the government can manage or uh, or used to solve the problem that and the expectation that they had the people has in the Dominican Republic, they reduce a lot. So I be careful to compare a country like uh, South Korea and the Dominican Republic, because there's uh, some aspect that the economy doesn't want it to, to, to involve many. Uh, is aspect like uh, social culture, social capa capacity in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, trust, uh, idiosyncrasy. For example, give you some example. 50 years ago, on, or 30 years ago, uh, Dominican Republic and Korea has a totalitarily government form. In, in South Korea, they have a general park who has a, a dictator. And we have a Trujillo in Dominican Republic who was uh, 30 years. The difference between uh, this kind of uh, of government was uh, Trujillo f make policy and institutionality to his benefits, economic benefits. The general part, although he was a very hard dictator also, he made institutionality to give to the private sector the muscle to develop the economy. So when Trujillo died, all the institution that was working for him and him in the terrorist end. When the General Park released the government, the old institution are made to, which made to support the, the private sector and this large firm like Samsung, like uh, LG or, and others. So we need to to see in the in, in, in when 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 you make a, this kind of comparison between the country, how the culture and how the institutionality historical works in terms of develop the new class of um, of a mind, um, or mindset of the the new firms and the new businessman in our countries, the businessman that we have right now. There's used to be, or used to be protected from the government. Uh, is usually looking for rent, no for benefits, and in the 80 percent, uh, the businessman that we have in the Dominican Republic rise, looking how through here you protect them to develop uh, his um, his firms, uh, develop his wealth. Is the same stage that Haiti live right now. Haiti are trying to develop a new political industry 
like we made 50 years ago, protect them, to high, uh, to rise the tariff, to put some uh, obstacles, you know, some uh, no tariff uh, constraints to export, mainly to the Dominican Republic, because they also have it a relationship to sustainable the free trade with them. So I, w I will be very careful to support a uh, strategy to export to Haiti because it's very fragile. It's not sustainable because it, there's in Haiti it doesn't have any institutionality to give, to, sh to ensure you that you, you will be, uh, you know, fairly or trusted in them, in, in the institutionality. And we can see right now, uh, for example, we export to Haiti in poultry and eggs over 2,000 or 3,000, uh, 300, million of dollars per year and they close uh, with uh, administrative decisions the, the export of poultry and we don't have any other uh, institutionality in, in all over the world or WTO to to solve this kind of problems if you ask me Haiti is doing well well if I could be the minister of, of industry in Haiti, they made well for them because they want to make some uh, industry. They, they want to solve the problem on employment that they have. They only have export and, and the uh, balance between Haiti and the Dominican Republic is 1,000 for one or less. So it's, it's sustainable, this kind of negotiation to to sign a free trade agreement, so it's very difficult. Another aspect that we want to, to, to discuss or make, make remarks in terms of these uh, books is uh, uh, try to see more in an agriculture than the tourism, for example. I think, and I'm very sure that in, in tourism, we need to revelate it the model that we have before, because it's the model we, with, without any value added. The problem is not the tourism. The problem, we have comparative uh, access, um, comparative advances than the other country in, in, in the area in terms of tourism. The thing is that tourism doesn't have a value added and is not included the community. So we need to include the community in the tourism because the tourism that we have is 80% all inclusive. And what you have is called inclusive, you, you, you have the free zone, uh, the same uh, free zone that you have in the manufacturing, you have a free zone in tourism. So we need to change the, the, the mindset about tourism. And the agriculture, we need to foster it to give the tourism the 80% at least of old goods that they sold or they serve to the tourism. Right now, only the 10% is coming from the Dominican Republic. So I uh, focus on agriculture, but no traditional agriculture, more, tradi more agriculture in terms of uh, value added. Uh, see the niche and the segment here, for example, in the United States that we don't uh, take advance for that. And another market very important like Europe, that we have a free trade with Europe uh, also. To give you some sample, right now we are sell more than 200 million of dollars in terms of uh, vegetable, vegetable vegetables and fruits to niche, uh, to new niche, uh, no traditional niche, in no traditional pr 
products in, in the Dominican Republic. So um, there's many opportunity in the sport to United States and Europe in terms of organic, uh, organic fruits. For example, we are the one or the two in all over the world export an organic banana and cacao and cafe. So we have uh, many opportunity in agriculture with very high value added to high, uh, high end consumers also. But for me, there's uh, some aspects to to cover in this in this in this uh, in this book is the institutionality aspect. I think, and um, for my experiences, uh, country like us, uh, between in country coming from the third world to be countries, uh, development development countries. The, the difference is uh, high high quality and inclusive institutionality. The 90% of institutionality that we have in the Dominican Republic and other countries like us, uh, they respond to the LED, to the LED in, in North for all of all the countries. So, I will remark more in how institutionality works to support the sustainable in this kind of model and how we want to make uh, the, the develop uh, in terms of, of more than economic numbers or recommendations, m more that institutionality to support and to work to the 80% of the population, no to the 10% to the or 50% that we use to to make use to to have in our country. So again, uh, congratulations, and we are open in the yard to to support you and support again the GFDD and your program that is very interesting. Thank you. I think we have time for a couple of questions. If anyone has a question for either of the panelists today, yeah. Can you turn off the mic? My name is Ismael, and I have many reasons to be proud of Jose. Mostly one of them because I'm Dominican, um, Dominican citizen, and number two because um, he's a graduate from the economics department at the new school where I'm a student, so phenomenal job. I like um, a lot of things that you did, but number one, how you explain some of the inequities in the country, which, are, which come from a regressive tax system, and some of the inequities that exist within the labor market, especially like what's happening to women within the labor market. I thought that was phenomenal. Um, what else did I like? I like the fact that you focus on how the negative trade balance impacts labor markets. That's fascinating. But my questions are as follows. I have a few of them. Um, what is the natural rate of unemployment in the country? And I ask this in light of the fact that we've had, as you said, we've had over, what is it, like three decades of double-digit unemployment? So what, what do you think, and maybe this is something you can just, from the top of your head, give me an idea of what's the natural rate of unemployment at this time. And also you alluded to the factors, the homogeneous factors in, um, in the markets. And I'm wondering, is there a workforce development strategy in the country in terms of being able to help Dominicans transition from industries that are low, of low added value to industries that are of higher added value? Um, what else? Also, is there, uh, is there a strategy in the research that you did that ha that's linked, any type of governmental strategy that's linked to how remittances are used in terms of providing social safety nets and, um, and development in general? And lastly, in um, page 38 of the book, um, in the econometric analysis that you did, I'm wondering what industries fall under the other services sectors that you list, which account for like a quarter of um, contribution to employment. That's it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I can take yeah. a, a few questions. Is there is another one. We can go ahead with this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. thank, you. Uh, thank you for both of you to for your um, questions and reactions. Um, I um, I agree with both of you uh, and. But I, I just want to, to 
comment about the dictator and, and the institutions. Uh, what I say in the Dominican Republic is that with and without um, the dictator, the policy, the, the, the policy in terms of economic, the economic policies have more or less the same um, tendency is is to attract foreign capital. Of course, in terms of liberties and democracy and, and, and in, in that area, of course, you see a huge difference. But in terms of the uh, public policy orientation, it is, is more or less the same. Um, less attract, more on, on foreign capital, let's forget about development um, uh, or, or strengthen local firms. And, and that's something that I, I um, argue in the book that uh, you need to the, to change that the, the the Dominican Republic government need to change that focus uh, and and say okay I'm going to attract foreign capital because I'm a I'm a poor country, but also I'm going to require um, horizontal linkages as as what Andres recommend for the tourist sector. You need to to um, put some some demands to these firms. Say okay you're going to produce here. I'm going to give you these benefits. But you need to buy to local producers this and that, and, and in that way you can create concatenation. And in that way is when you when foreign production complements um, local production. And in the case of Haiti, uh, I don't argue about a free trade agreement with Haiti. I'm just saying that even without a free trade agreement, they, the, the the trade have increased substantially, and and, and can increase even even more. Um, and I think that is in, in, the, in the best interest of the Dominican Republic to um, uh, look at, the, at their local firms and, 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 and set some strategies with their local firms saying, okay, we need corporations that are to, to export these and these other products instead of focusing so much. So, so if we change that orientation, we can look for several aspects with Haiti, with the U.S., with the rest of the Central American countries, with South America, um, to to um, um, increase the presence of this local friend and at the same time decrease the, the high level of employment because, as you see, uh, local firms or small and medium-sized firms ha are the largest employers. Now, in the case of natural unemployment rate, well, that's some, that's it depends how we define it because. It's something that we don't don't observe in the data. We we tend to think that there is a, a natural unemployment rate, but we don't we don't know. So, so there are some approximations. Some people use some econometrics um, on techniques like the Kalman filter or the HP filter. So if I, when I did that, the, what I get is is about 14 percent, 15 percent. So it is is actually what I call a structural uh, unemployment rate is because it's, it's too high. Any country that have an unemployment rate greater than two digits is, is considered too high. Um, that concept of natural unemployment rate is used here in, in the U.S. and in many other rich countries because three percent, you can argue that that's, that's full employment. And in that way, some, some people set the natural unemployment rate uh, at that level. but, but if I do that exercise and I get that the natural unemployment rate is 15 percent, that only um, suggests me that that's a high uh, structural unemployment. Um, in terms of remittance, I just um, uh, argue for increasing technology for this sector because in that way you can increase. Uh, now this corporation, I was saying, charge about 5 percent. Um, that's the fee that they charge for, 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 the, for the amount of remittance that are sent. Um, so if you decrease that, you can increase the, the, the remittance that are sent to, to, to the population there and increase the development. But I, I don't, don't have, the, was outside of the scope of my paper to go o over um, more detailed analysis about remittance. O others, uh, and I'm sorry also with you because I, I have to give in 30 minutes the findings of, of six months of research. Um, so uh, I was a little bit quick. 
um, but I hope that you get um, the, the general idea. Other services is, is defined by the, the, by the central bank uh, as, as, uh, as the rest of the services, right? That's what they call it, the rest. The other services are the rest of the services and, and include things like barbershop and many, many, many other um, areas. And that's also, is, is, is right, it's a large percentage of the total employment. So it reminds that this, this country have a, it's a service-oriented um, economy. And if we increase also local services and, 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 and commerce and all these sectors that have a, we can decrease a high structural unemployment. And, and that's also directly linked to the stagnation of the real wage, because when you have such a, la a large unemployment, um, employers can say, okay, I don't, I don't have to increase the, the wages because if you don't want to work, I, I can look in that, um, in, in that group of people that is a lot of people out there that is looking for a job. So that's also working to decrease the, the real wage. So um, that once again, the, the, the final goal of, of the government should be um, full employment because in that way you can create um, you can achieve higher development goals, including in increasing the, the average um, real wage. I think we have time for maybe one more question, if anyone else has something they wanted to ask. Yeah. First of all, I want to say thanks for the panelists and for the organization of this great, great uh, information giver, because this research it's like uh, seeing Dominican Republic inside from, from here. And I would like to ask, how do you think will impact in Dominican economy how the current government is working on in agriculture because it's promoting cooperative to give financial help for those uh, workers and those cooperative? And how may impact the 10 million tourist that the president is looking for in the next 10 years, how that will impact the Dominican economy at the development as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your question. Uh, it's a, it's agriculture is, a, as you said, is a very important sector. Uh, Marco Cusione, uh, which was is a was a researcher of, of this this um, ONG and he wrote a very interesting book about fair trade and he's um, focusing in how if if the government set strategies to um, increase create cooperative of agriculture producers and look for certain niches terminated products the the impact that can that can have. Um, in in the countryside, uh, in, in in the rural sector, in the rural population, and I agree with him. That's one of the best strategies. Uh, another strategy is, is what um, what uh, Andre mentioned. Um, we were also Andre and me were, were um, talking before the presentation that uh, through the e-commerce, also uh, uh, many of these agricultural producers can export terminated products. And in that way, you can increase the, the value added and, 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 and increase because right now, m most of the agriculture is, is sending primary products. For example, um, the chocolate that is selling in, in, in Europe and here is terminated here, but not in the Dominican Republic. So in, in that value change, um, most of the, uh, of the large part stay in, in other countries. Um, so I think that uh, and, and based on, on my results that I if they increase uh, the agriculture set, to they're going to decrease um, two problems. Or one of the problems was the, dec the low calorie consumption, and the other one is, is going to increase employment. Um, I found that the agriculture have a, a large impact in the, in the unemployed. And, and if they stimulate that sector, especially in, in, in the other, in, the, in, in that niches of high value added, um, it's also going to promote higher wages in, in, in that sector um, for, for many of the, of, of the Dominicans that 
are, are, are now studying and studying and being more educated. Um, so there is a lot of work to do, and, and uh, if the government change that focus and, and start to look without specializing, because once again, I raise a flag of specializing in agriculture, um, which can create terms of trade problems and other things. Um, if they look for that high value added niches, they can create um, higher employment and also um, decrease the, the low calorie consumption. Both both problems are directly linked to, to development. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Global Foundation for Democracy and Development, um, I want to thank you all for being here today. Um, I also want to thank our panelists, uh, Mr. Caraballo Cueto and Mr. Randerhorst, for being here. Um, I know I learned a lot from what you had to say today. I hope everyone else did, too. Um, we invite you, again, to take one of Mr. Caraballo Cueto's books that are on the table here on your way out. Um, and also to visit our web page so that you can be aware of upcoming events both here at the UN um, and in the greater New York area. And you can join us. So how about one more round of applause for our presenters? Thank you.